All right, so welcome to the 12th video in this orchestration series. In our last video, we discussed transposing instruments, including various reasons for why instruments transpose and which instruments in the orchestra are transposing instruments. In this video, we are going to finally tackle a topic that many beginning composers and orchestrators tend to be very eager to learn, and that is how to double instruments. We'll discuss various approaches to doubling, reasons for doubling, and just a couple things to keep in mind when selecting which instruments to double. So with that, let's get started. Doubling is defined as having two or more different instruments performing the same part together. These can be done in unison, where all the instruments are performing the same pitch together, in octaves, where the instruments all perform the same note but in different octaves, or in intervals, where the same rhythmic pattern is followed, but the notes are separated by an interval other than an octave, with perfect fourths, perfect fifths, and thirds all being common choices. Now, there are two primary reasons why you could choose to double in your music, and the first is to create a new and unique tone color for the part by just blending the sounds of two or more instruments together, uh, for example, the doubling the harp and the flute in unison is a very common strategy. It results in a sound that's very similar to a flute, but with a stronger attack on each note. The second reason is to increase the volume, or the prominence, of a given part. And this is particularly helpful when you need some material to compete for attention with the rest of the orchestra, or for when you're looking to create growth in your music from a previous statement. After all, uh, flutes and clarinets playing together will sound louder than flutes performing on their own. Now, before we go any further, I do want to make something clear. At no point in this video, or even in this series for that matter, am I going to provide a long list of just common instrument pairings. Very often, this seems to be what most uh, beginning composers want to learn. What instruments can double with the cello? What instruments can double with the trumpet? Can I mix the piano and the viola? And questions like this are, they're, they're well intended, but they tend to miss the mark. Realistically speaking, there are just too many different combinations that can be made in the orchestra to be expected to memorize them, or to even find a list like that very practical to use in the first place. Even if I were to provide a list like this, the tendency would be to become too dependent on it and to lose some of the inherent creativity that comes with being a new orchestrator. The last thing we want is to rely on a sheet of paper to tell you what you can or can't do with your music. Instead, our time is going to be much better spent by learning a few very simple guidelines that can then be used to come up with any number of useful combinations that will be both organic and vitalizing to your music. So first things first, Let's break down all the possible different instrument pairings into just two simple categories. Like doubling and unlike doubling. Doubling like instruments refers to pairing instruments that belong to the same subsection. For example, doubling the violin with the viola, or the oboe with the bassoon. Because these instruments belong to the same subsection, they already have very similar tone colors to each other. As such, combining them is not going to result in any new, dramatic tone color. Instead, this approach works best when your primary focus is on increasing the volume and the presence of the material that you are doubling. The other type of doubling, or unlike doubling, is when you pair instruments that belong to different subsections. For example, the viola and the clarinet, or the cello and the horn. In these situations, the instruments are from different subsections, so they have very different tone colors, which, when combining, results in a brand new tone color. And of course, this also results in an increased volume and presence to the sound, but the most dramatic impact will typically be the shift in tone color. Beyond these two options, we can find two additional subcategories. Uh, and we've actually already touched on them. There's doubling in octaves and doubling in unison. In these situations, you have a further impact on the type of sound you create by selecting whether or not your instruments are playing the exact same pitches. In general, having your instruments play in unison results in a sharper focus on creating a new tone color. 
while having your instruments play in octaves, or really any other interval for that matter, will typically result in a sharper focus on volume and on presence. The reason being that the instruments are now taking up much more space across the registers in your music. Now, the important thing to note here is that neither impact is mutually exclusive. Playing in unison will result in more volume, but the focus is going to be stronger on tone color. Playing in octaves will result in a new tone color, but the stronger focus will be on volume and on presence. When selecting which actual instruments you want to double, you'll want to focus on tone colors and not the pitch ranges. Let me say that again. Focus on tone colors and not pitch ranges, all right? Just because the oboe and flute have plenty of overlap in their pitch range does not mean that they'll give you the sound you're looking for. Instead, first think of what type of tone colors you're looking for. Come up with a few instruments that can work with it, and then pick the best options for the goals you have in mind for your doubling. So now we have four distinct approaches for doubling. We have unlike in unison, unlike in octaves, like in unison, and like in octaves. Deciding on which approach you want to take will depend on what kind of impact you're trying to get for your music. Are you focusing on tone color or on volume? How much of both are you looking for? For example, when you decide that you want to double for a new tone color as your primary focus, you'll want to work with unlike pairings and focus on tone colors and the timbre that you're looking for. In these cases, tone color and register will take top priority in choosing your instruments. In moments where you want to create more growth in your music, the focus is on strategy. Now, the exact type of pairing is less important here than how you actually use them for your orchestration. For example, starting the material out in a single voice, then doubling it with a single string section, like the first violins, before doubling it a third time, this time with the brass, creating a stronger volume and presence. The main idea is that you're gradually increasing the presence of the music by moving it to stronger and stronger voices as you go. Incidentally, the same idea works in reverse, so when you're trying to reduce the overall presence of the voice, just move to gradually smaller and smaller voices. Finally, in moments where you're doubling purely for the sake of volume and presence, for example, during a huge climactic moment in your music, any kind of doubling is acceptable, but your top priorities should be selecting powerful registers for each instrument and just working in as many octaves as you can. And with that, we've reached the end of yet another video in this series. I hope you found it helpful and that you feel prepared to come up with your own unique doublings for your music. If you found this video useful and would like to be alerted when the next one is released, please like and subscribe to this channel. And likewise, please share it with anyone you think will also find it helpful. In the meantime, thank you so much for your continued support. Keep working hard, keep studying, and as always, keep writing new music.